you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer this question first on your own before listening on. We can begin by drawing a picture that represents the given information. So over here is where this projectile is initially launched with a velocity of v naught at an angle that we've marked theta, and then it travels in a parabolic trajectory until it hits the ground over here and has traveled a displacement horizontally that we've marked delta x. Now, usually with a projectile motion question, it's useful to organize the information into the following table. On the left side of the table, we have the initial velocity, the final velocity, acceleration, time, and displacement, and then across the top we have the x component as well as the y component. Now, for the x component of the initial velocity, we can see, if we drew it, that it would be pointing to the right in this direction. And we can see that this component is adjacent to the angle that we've marked theta. And because it's adjacent, we're going to use the cosine function. So this ends up being v naught times the cosine of theta. The y component, which points straight up, we can see is opposite to that angle marked theta. And because it's opposite, we're going to use sine. So we have v naught times the sine of theta. Now, the acceleration in the x direction is typically 0 for projectile motion questions. But for the y direction, it's going to be negative 9.8 and that's the acceleration due to gravity. And if we look carefully, we can see that the displacement in the x direction is marked off here as delta x. And the question actually noted that that displacement was 81.1 meters. So we can actually fill in 81.1. For the y direction, we're going to make the case that the displacement is actually 0. And to understand that, it might be helpful to mark this point right here as the initial position and then this point over here as the final position. And then if you compare the position initially with the position finally, you can see that the projectile hasn't actually moved either upward or downward. And therefore, the displacement in the y direction is actually 0. We can actually go back here and fill in the known values. We were told that the angle theta was 45 degrees. And so we can actually replace theta with 45 for both the x and y components. Now let's turn to the final velocities in the x and y direction. For the x direction, because there is no acceleration, that means the velocity isn't changing. So if it started out as v naught cos 45, it's going to finish as v naught cos 45. For the y direction, we know from the diagram that initially it's launched upward and therefore has a positive initial velocity. But then when it comes back over to the final position, right before it hits the ground, it's moving downward. And it's therefore going to have a negative velocity. So when we fill in the velocity final for the y direction, we have to make sure that there's a negative sign. Also, since the object returns to the same level at which it had started, that means the magnitude of its final velocity in the y direction is the same. So we can actually plug in v naught sine of 45 in. But again, we're just going to make sure we make it negative because it's pointing down over here at the final position. Now, we don't know the times, but we're going to actually derive an expression for the time. And to do that, we're going to consider the information in the y direction. Now, from this chapter, we have learned the following equation. And what we'll do is plug in the known information again from the y direction. So the final velocity is negative v naught times the sine of 45. The initial velocity is positive v naught times the sine of 45. The acceleration is negative 9.8. And then the time we can just mark as t. Now a little algebra here, we're adding a negative quantity. So we can actually turn that into subtraction. And our goal is to solve this equation for the time t. So let's subtract this v naught sine 45 over to the other side. When we do that, we'll get negative 2 v naught sine of 45. And that's going to equal negative 9.8 times t. And then we'll divide both sides by negative 9.8. And so here we have an expression for the time t. We have a negative quantity divided by another negative quantity, which makes it positive overall. We can also reduce the fraction here. If we divide the top by 2, we'll get 1. And if we divide the bottom by 2, we'll get 
So we now have an expression for the time, and we can actually come back and fill that into our table. We can do that for both the y component and for the x component because the time in those two directions will be the same. Okay, so now let's turn to this equation also from this chapter that relates the displacement to a couple of other variables here. And this time we're going to explore the x direction information. Now we can see that in the x direction the acceleration is zero. So if we plug zero in right here for the acceleration, that's actually going to eliminate this term here. Now let's recall that for the time we came up with this expression right here. So let's take that expression and substitute it in for the time t. Also, let's not forget that the initial velocity in the x direction is this expression right here. So let's substitute in v naught cos 45 for this v naught here. Now we can see that we have a v naught multiplied by v naught, so that can be v naught squared. And then if we wish, we can multiply cos 45 by sine 45. You can do that on your calculators if you prefer. Just make sure that you are in degree mode. And when you do that, you'll actually get a half. So we can rewrite this equation in the following way. Now let's not forget that we're trying to solve in part A for V naught. And so to do that, we can multiply both sides of this equation by 4.9 so that it will cancel on the right side. And then we can multiply both sides by two, in fact, because one half times two is one, so that's gonna cancel out. And then finally, we can take the square root of both sides. We have now isolated V naught, which is the initial speed of the projectile. All we have to do is plug in the displacement. And again, if we go back to the question, or even to our chart, we can see that displacement in the X direction was 81.1. So let's go ahead and plug that in. And when you crunch that down, you should get approximately 28.2. The unit will be meters per second since we calculated a speed. So this is the correct answer to part A. And now that we have that answer, we can answer easily part B, which wants the total time. So that's asking us for the time t. We can take our expression for time, which was v naught sine 45 over 4.9, and plug in the value of v naught that we just determined. And when you crunch this down, you should get roughly 4.07 for the time and that will be in seconds. So that's the correct answer to part B. Now one way of answering part C is to return to the work that we had derived earlier where we had the 45 degree angles plugged in. In this case we're being asked for a launch angle that's greater than 45. So one approach would be to make up a number that's greater than 45. So maybe we could try 60. And if we plug 60 degrees in here we would have the following equation. Now we could pick up our calculators and multiply the cosine of 60 by the sine of 60, and when we do that, we get about 0.433. So this equation would become delta x equals v naught squared times 0.433 over 4.9. We could then solve this for v naught, just like we did before. So there we have that, and then for delta x, we're still using the same value of 81.1. .1. So then we could plug this into our calculator, and when we compute that, we get about 30.3 meters per second. So compare that speed with the speed we had determined in part A. We can indeed see that it would have to be greater. And so the correct answer to part C would be greater speed. We can see also that the time would have to go up. Because the time, when we calculated that, we had plugged in the velocity right here. Well, instead of 28.2, if we plugged in a larger value of 30.3 and then crunch this down into our calculators, we would end up with a greater time. In fact, we would end up with about 4.4 seconds. And so the time would also be greater relative to the original time we calculated in Part B. So in other words, a greater speed as well as a greater time would be the correct answer to Part C.